All right, so in this video, I'm going to give you a complete overview of how to express the body weight squat position and the key things that we want to be thinking about and considering when we're actually holding that end range position. So when it comes to a full depth, nice, comfortable body weight squat, there are a few certain attributes that we need to consider when we are trying to express that position. And so just to quickly go over those and give you a nice vantage point of that, I'll show you from a side angle here. So first of all, we need some good active dorsiflexion of the ankle. So you want to be using your tibialis anterior to try and pull your knees further forwards over your toes. We need good hip flexion. So you want your hips to also actively be contracting and engaged to try and pull you into that deep hip flexion. And one of the more important things that often gets overlooked with the body weight squat is our center of mass, right? So we want our center of mass to be shifted further forwards, more aligned over the feet. And so this is why you'll see people when you're, when you extend the arms in front of you, you're able to get a little bit deeper or even if you're holding weight in front of you, especially. And the reason for that is because it shifts your center of mass further forwards, right? So as soon as you go from arms extended to maybe arms on your shoulders or arms behind your head, all of a sudden your center of mass shifts back and it goes shifts more onto your heels, which kind of pulls you out of balance and it makes you want to kind of fall out of the position. And so if we're looking to develop a nice, comfortable, pass, more, more passive, um, deep body weight squat position, we need to be able to lean our torso and our trunk further forwards in between our legs to shift our center of mass further forwards so that we don't need to extend our arms out like this and be completely active in our tibs and our hip flexors, right? So the key to that is actually allowing your spine to round out, allow your back to round and actually leaning further forwards into the position to shift your center of mass further forwards over your feet. Because as soon as I try to keep my back straight in a more active position and keep my trunk a lot more upright, again, it shifts my center of mass further back, which makes this position a lot more active. I need to really engage and flex my tibialis anterior. I need to really engage and flex my hip flexors and my spinal erectors. So this is a very static, active position where all my muscles are very much so engaged. But when it comes to just being able to actually sit in this position and relax here and spend longer durations of time, in the bodyweight squat and actually be able to just kind of relax here and sit here, we need to be able to actually shift our body weight forward, shift the center of mass forwards. And so if you're trying to keep your back straight, that is going to prevent you from actually being able to do that effectively. So you can see my active position versus my more passive position. As soon as I let my spine round out, round out my hips sink a lot deeper into flexion. I get a lot deeper into this bodyweight squat position, and it's just a lot more comfortable that way. And the other key factor for us to consider in our end range squat position is the external rotation of the hips, right? Because this is gonna do a couple things. A, external rotation is going to help facilitate allowing you to move into a deeper hip flexion, which will allow you to sink deeper into the squat position. But on the other hand, it also creates this space in front of us for us to actually lean our body further forwards into the position so that we can easily shift our center of mass further forwards without having our knees and our legs just kind of coming into the way and making everything awkward and imbalanced. So just to give you a demonstration here, if I try to keep everything as internally rotated as possible and fight our bodies natural inclination to externally rotate the hips as we approach that deep flexion, you'll see how I'm just limiting myself here, right? So keeping everything internally rotated here and avoiding that external rotation, I can get to about here and I feel blocked up, right? I can't really get any deeper without first 
externally rotating the hips and sinking a little deeper into it. And that again, creates the space for me to find that deeper hip flexion and for me to lean my body further forwards to maintain that nice center of mass over the feet like we're looking for. So having your feet turned slightly outwards is going to help facilitate more external rotation in the hips because if your feet are externally rotated, it makes it much easier for your femurs to externally rotate as well. And that external rotation is, again, part of our body's natural inclination as we approach those deep uh, ranges of hip flexion where we go above and beyond 90 degrees of hip flexion into these deeper, deeper ranges like 120, 130 degrees. So those are the things that we need to be considering when it comes to improving our body weight squat and holding it and checking in on our progress there. We want to have sufficient um, dorsiflexion, right? So you can use your tibialis anterior, use your hip flexors to help pull you further forwards into that position. We want sufficient external rotation in the hips. And again, so think about just turning those knees more outwards and opening your feet is going to help you do that a lot more as well because the more internally rotated your feet are, the more internally rotated your hips are going to be, which is then going to place much, much higher demands on your mobility and range of motion and static strength in these positions. Again, my, my tibs are just working on overtime here to keep me in this position. So that external rotation is gonna create that space in the hips it's gonna create more space just physically for you to lean your torso further forward so we can maintain a nice center of mass over the feet and prevent it or prevent us from shifting our center of mass back onto the heels so that we feel like we're gonna lose our balance if we go any deeper. And so those are the main things to consider.